Well, the Detroit Lions have some new injuries that we didn't know about uh, earlier in the week. Um, We know Jameer got hurt at practice. Now we're hearing, I mean, this was last week, but now we're hearing that Sam Laporta uh, may have a calf issue, issue, which happened Wednesday at practice. Uh, We don't know. He did not practice on Thursday. Uh, TJ, have you heard anything down at the building in regards to Sam Laporta's availability or how severe or not severe this calf issue may be yeah i don't um i mean i don't want to get people excited one other but uh when i was down there thursday i did talk to a few people and you know they said something it popped up cat little calf issue uh i didn't get a sense of high concern um but anytime it happens late in the week i mean you know obviously not great news um but i don't i don't know i mean i guess i would be Probably expect Laporta to be a questionable type of guy. Maybe yep. a game time decision. Give him a couple more days to, uh, you know, heal up and stretch and, and do whatever you got to do to to get that calf ready. Uh, I did not sense a uh, an extreme sense of uh, panic or anything when it came to him, um, which was different because last week Gibbs went down on Friday and immediately yep. it was like, oof, like yeah, it yep. wasn't good, right? So. Um, I think if I'm sitting here right now, probably still say 50, 50 shot for Sam Laporta and might even go up all the way until kickoff, but wouldn't be surprised to see him out there, um, either. All right. So, um, we've got Jonah Jackson who has not practiced all week. Jameer Gibbs, who has not practiced all week. Now Sam Laporta who did not practice yesterday. James Mitchell, um, did not practice offensively. They're taking some hits. They do expect Amon Ross St. Brown. He was full practice on Thursday, Taylor Decker was full practice. So they're getting maybe their number one playmaker back in, in Amon Ross St. Brown, but losing an option on offense if if you're not able to have Sam Laporta. How big would this be or how big, let's just st- go injuries in general, how important or how big is the impact of the list of injuries for the Lions going down to Tampa Bay? Yeah, well, I think the guys that I think are still concerning are, are probably Branch and Gibbs, only because it's going on two weeks now. Um, and, you know, still no practice. I mean, if they were limited, you know, might have a better feel uh, about where they're at. But, you know, since they've been held out uh, most of the week, we don't know what's going to happen, obviously, later today, which is Friday afternoon. Um, those two guys <laughs> – Still kind of feeling iffy about Jonah Jackson. I think, um, you know, something that popped up in the game last week, he was able to finish the game, uh, which is always good news. Yeah. Uh, we obviously know that Dan Campbell, uh, look, these guys work hard during the week. Um, but the biggest thing with him, I think he takes care of his players. You know, he allows it and he allows those guys uh, to get healthy. And I think he understands you know, I don't need you for 50 snaps on Wednesday, you know, if you're banged up, especially this early in the season. Uh, I need you on Sunday. So do what you got to do throughout the week to get healthy and, and come give me, uh, you know, 65, 70 plays Sunday. So I think Jonah's issue, look, it, anytime you hear ankle, um, there's a couple different ways. The high ankle we know is the more severe one. That's usually, uh, you know, multiple weeks, low ankle, um, kind of just that sprain. I think that's a little bit more what Jonah's dealing with discomfort, but he's a tough guy. I mean, if, if, if he's, uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see him playing, um, this weekend, but, uh, Laporta, I mean, if he can't go probably a big deal, um, you know, only because I think that tight end position and the production that he has brought has probably been the biggest improvement, uh, on this team, um, so far this year. He certainly exceeded a lot of our expectations for being a rookie and coming in and um, really being able to put up these kind of numbers. It, it, it's unheard of, um, but I think that would be a, I would think that would be damaging only because he's built such a good uh, rapport with the quarterback. The, the play caller trusts him. He's always in the right spot. He's doing the right things. Um, anytime you're missing a guy like that, I think production will definitely fall off a little bit. The rest of the guys. Probably a wait and see type of deal. I mean, we know that uh, Zonovan Knight came out. I think this morning, shoulder injury is probably going to be done for the year. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if you can get one of those two guys, whether Branch, whether Gibbs, um, if you can get one of those guys back, you know, definitely feel a lot better about the injury situation. But the good part about this team is they've got depth, right? We we saw that last week. They were missing uh, a whole bunch of guys, and two of your top offensive guys with Gibbs and, and St. Brown. Uh, no problem. Go out there, score 42 points, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, um, you know, so it's good to see the depth that they have. And same thing defensively. You got got some guys that can't can't go. You got guys behind them that that are more than capable of stepping up and, and going out there and pro- playing 
uh, high level football for you. All right, so let's talk a little bit of Tampa Bay. Um, it's a it's a team that a lot of the parts on their their fi- their last Super Bowl championship defensively they're still there. And when you look at Devin White, Levante David, Shaq Barrett, like maybe all around one, one of the top three linebacking cores in the NFL. And so that's the, the this strength of this team is their defense. Offensively, that looks like they're going to get uh, Mike Evans back. Obviously, they got Chris Godwin. They've got some talented players and Tristan Wirfs. I'm I'm really looking forward to the Hutch Wirfs uh, matchup uh, up front at times when when that's becomes a, a a matchup. But what concerns you? What should Lions fans be looking at for this Tampa Bay team? I you know I, one of my biggest keys is don't get. Don't get scared. Don't get scared off of running the ball. Don't get intimidated or bullied out of the run game, right? I think Vita Vita Vey is a big boy. Uh, Devin White, Levante (laughs) David, like you said, they're good linebackers. They're fast, man. They cover sideline to sideline in a hurry. If you don't get a hat on those guys, they can make it a long-ass day for you offensively. I think, look, I wouldn't be surprised early, you know, if if the Lions came out, tried to you know, establish the run game. And hey, if you're not having too much success early, that's what, don't abandon it, right? That's, I think, what too many teams do uh, when they try to get in these type of games. They just look at it and say, well, they got a run, good run defense. We're just going to start passing the ball, right? That's not your identity uh, of this of this Lions football team. If, if this is a game where Jared Goff drops back and throws probably 40 times, I don't like the chances of them winning the game. Um, They've got to continue to stay balanced. They've got to find a way to just keep chopping wood when it comes to the run game because that's kind of been the MO of the season, right? I know last week we saw an explosive early in the game with Dave Montgomery and the 42-yard touchdown, Um, but the MO of this team is, hey, we're going to beat you up for the three, four yards, the dirty yards early in the game, and then we're going to wear you out by the fourth quarter. Those are going to turn into the eight, nine, ten-yard gains. Um, You you have to have that same mindset. Don't lose track of your identity just because you're playing a good defense with a lot of good players doesn't mean you should change what you do, right? You have to go in. First of all, you're good at it, too. So go into the game with the mindset of we're gonna make we're gonna do it until they stop us. Don't just stop yourself by looking at the stats and looking at the depth chart and saying, "Well, I don't know. We can't do this this week because they got some players. You got some players too. Go trust what you do and stick uh, stick true to your identity." Now, I think the biggest thing with this Tampa Bay team, honestly, John, when you watch the film and you kind of look at some of the players they have, if you want to compare it to a game that the Lions have already played this year. I get a lot of Seattle vibes, which, you know, see uh, the Tampa Bay offensive line that works is a good player, uh, but they try to help those guys out a lot. They don't yeah. ask them to drop back and uh, five man protect 30 times a game. Um, it's a lot of play action. It's a lot of max protect. It's a lot of tight ends and running backs uh, staying in the block and helping out their offensive line, uh, which is very similar to what Seattle did, right? We saw Seattle run, play action, play action, run, 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 play. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that type of uh, it's that type of scheme. And they try to do a good job with Baker of giving him, hey, one read, right? We're going to drop back, play action, boom, hit this guy. And you've got some big physical receivers on the outside, much like uh, Seattle did as well. Um, so I think hopefully you learn from that game. I think that the, this defense has gotten tremendously better when it comes to uh, coverage uh, in the secondary and even at the linebacker level. Um, and and you're, that's going to have to continue again this week because Tampa Bay's run game really isn't anything. I yeah. think as a team, they're averaging, you know, three yards a carry. Yeah. I mean, they've got it's one rush touchdown. I think their longest run is 14 yards. This isn't a team that's going to line up and try to, pound it down your throat 35 times a game. Uh, you got to be alert of Baker, and, and Baker's doing a good job taking the ball away. The biggest reason why this Tampa Bay team is 3-1 and one right now is the turnover differential. They've only turned it over three times. They've played four games. They had the bye week, uh, but they've taken it away 10, right? That's a lot. Yeah. They're plus seven through four games in the takeaway department. Um, I don't care who you are. You're, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. Now, we know the Lions obviously took a step forward last week getting the three takeaways defensively and, and hanging onto the football uh, on offense. That's going to be the MO of the – that's going to be the tail of the tape of this game. I think it's going to be who's better on third down, who can find a way to punch in touchdowns in the red zone, not settle for field goals, and who's going to take care of the football. Because I think you're like me. Uh, I don't I don't expect this to be – a 38 to 35 type of game or a high scoring game. I think it's somewhere in the 24, 20, 23, 20 yeah. uh, range. 
And we all know when you when you're playing low scoring football games like that, and you're playing kind of a defensive turnovers battle, matter. turnovers are going to make a huge difference. So that's going to be probably the biggest key for me this week: find a way defensively, take the ball away, and offense. Do what you did again last week. Take care of that football. Punting in a game like this is not the worst decision, right? Playing the field possession game is not the worst thing that that can happen to you in a game that we think it's going to be, which is probably going to be a low scoring one. So. I, I think our listeners would love to hear this. Um, I played tackle um, and not a lot of great matchups for the Lions uh, in regards to the edge rushers this week, but the big matchup is going to be inside with Vita Vea. Yeah. If you are, because you played guard, you played center, mostly guard though. How would you approach blocking Vita Vea, a guy like that who who does have some mobility, but he's just a freaking monster yeah i mean from a coaching pers- perspective i would try to find a way to double team that guy i yep. mean you know you you in, in your quarterback i think your quarterback's got to be in plan or in tune with the protection plan as well um that's in my opinion what kind of separates really good quarterbacks from just average quarterbacks you watch some quarterbacks sometimes they have no idea what the protection's coming from free runners they have no idea right good the good quarterbacks are able to sense that out the good quarterbacks are able to help their offensive line out and say okay we've got we're sliding left but oh man we've got this guy over here on the right you know what change the protection let's go double team that guy right you know it's going to be that type of game uh, because like you said he is the guy on that defensive line uh this isn't the same team a couple years ago that had yep. you know six seven guys coming off the edge you had to worry about uh Vita Vea, it starts with him um now, player-wise, if it were me, I'd find a way to get my hands on him as fast as I can. It's a guy you do not want getting three steps in the ground and getting that momentum coming forward at, at 355 weight. pounds. Yeah. Um, you, you know, my my style of game, and even the guards that I think the Lions have now, Jonah Jackson's good at it, even Graham and Vitae, uh, being able to keep the middle of the pocket firm, um, getting your hands on the guy quick, kind of setting down, being ready for the power rush and, and not allowing him to push the pocket up the middle, I think is going to be huge. Um, so that would be kind of my approach to playing a guy like that. And you already mentioned the other side, the Wirfs and uh, Hutchinson battle that we're going to yeah. see. I mean, the Frank Ragnow and Jonah and whether it's Graham or Vitae battle in there with uh, Vita Vea is going to be a heavyweight matchup as well. That's going to be one that's certainly probably going to make a difference in this game. If you're able to control a guy like that and not let him have – uh, you know, that type of game that, you know, couple of QB hits, sacks, forced fumble, uh, don't let them impact the game like that. You're going to give yourself a much better chance to win this game. So I want to get to our picks. The last one is going to be Lions uh, versus Tampa. So we'll get to what TJ and I both think about this game and the result or, or the outcome. Um, but last week, TJ, sorry to say you were one and three. Um, I was two and two. That's where I love, man. I love being in the mud. I'm just <laughs> being a comeback. Yes, you yeah. are, you are deep Setting in the myself mud. up for a comeback. All right. So this week, we're going to start with the Seahawks at Cincinnati, the Bengals, and it's Bengals minus two and a half. Who you got? I think I'm taking the Bengals. I think that something started to click a little bit uh, last week. They were able to finally get uh, Jamar Chase more involved in the game. Um, it's at Cincinnati, which I think, you, you know, I'd probably take the home team in this matchup no matter where yeah. it was. Seattle, it feels like they've made a lot of East Coast trips this year. We obviously know they well, we're not the East Coast, but it's still a four-hour time a difference. Go. It's still yeah. a long flight. They've been to New York. Now you got to go out to Cincinnati. I think that can wear on you uh, a little bit, only, you know, six games into the season. But I think Cincinnati, look, and, and this has kind of been – their identity the last couple of years, they always seem to have a terrible start, right? I think last year was 0-2. This year yeah. was uh, 1-3, and right? They've kind of battled their way back a little bit. Uh, I think they're starting to click a little bit on Cincinnati's offensive side uh, specifically. I think they got the firepower that's starting to show their potential from what we all expected before the season. So I, I think I'm going to take the Bengals on that one. Uh, I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I think uh, – I'm, I'm sorry, not Cincinnati, uh, Seattle. I think Cincinnati struggles to stop the run. And I think Seattle will be patient. They're going to run the ball. They're going to take their shots downfield. Joe Burrow has not been the same Joe Burrow. I know that they did find Jamar Chase last week. They were able to throw the ball around a little bit. Uh, some of that was just Jamar Chase making plays. Um, and it's not that that he won't, but I like the fact that, you know, in, in this game, Joe Burrow has struggled to get the ball downfield. It's been a lot of six, seven-yard uh, pass plays. They haven't been found consistency in the run game. So I'm going to go with uh, uh, Seattle. All right. Well, give me a chance to make a comeback. Game two, NFC North. NFC North battle, John. We've got the Vikings 
the one in four Vikings headed no. to take on the one in four Chicago Bears there in the uh, in the Windy City. The Bears Battle right now, Vikings three point favorites with all the injuries they've got. Who do you got? Who do you like in this game? Um, you know, I <laughs> I got the same feeling. <laughs> yeah, this one blows. How about a tie. <laughs> um, that would be awesome. Uh, but I I think Justin Fields the last two weeks has played better. I'm not going to yeah. sit here and tell you he's a good quarterback, but he does offer something in regards to playmaking ability. And I think the Vikings, I don't think the players expected to be one and four. I didn't nobody expects to be one and four, but I think especially with they were a playoff team, they were a 13 win team. I think they've been taken by surprise. And I think they're reeling. I, I don't know if if they're sitting there going, hey, are, you know, are they going to go full tank mode from the front office standpoint? Or, you know, what have they told the coaches? Hey, we, you know, I don't think they're going to tank, but I I just look at Kirk Cousins and his his propensity to turn the ball over this year. He hasn't made good decisions, been sacked. I'm going to go to the Bears. I'm kind of leaning the same way. I think there's turmoil going on in Minnesota right now. Justin Jefferson just got put on IR. Uh, we know he's kind of the <laughs> one yeah. bright spot of that offense uh, in particular, but uh, I just think that there's there's a lot of distractions in Minnesota right now. Kirk Cousins being asked this week about possibly waving a no trade clause, and yeah. uh, when those start to settle in a little bit, the the, the, the distractions start popping up. And and look, I do think look, it's been really one game. I mean, you call it one and a half games uh, now for the Bears offense, but. Uh, it seemed like something clicked last week in that Washington game, that Thursday night game that they played. Uh, DJ Moore was fantastic. Justin Fields, certainly better than what we've seen from him uh, throughout his career. I think something's starting to click a little bit there with him. Yeah. Um, still don't think he's a great quarterback, but when it comes to this matchup, it's in Chicago, probably going to be pretty shitty weather. Uh, Minnesota's a dome team. They're kind of soft and finesse, and when you're missing one of your top finesse players, that's definitely going to hurt. Um, so I think I'm with you. I'm going to take the Bears on that one as well. All right. Monday Night Football, Cowboys at the Chargers. Primetime Dak. <laughs> prime so time you're going two. Chargers? I'm going Chargers. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know what? It's primetime Dak versus primetime Brandon Staley, who always seems to make some oh, kind no. of stupid decision. He'll give out you a there game. Fourth down. I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time before – he goes for it on fourth and four from his own 20 while they're up four points and it comes back to bite him in the ass. He's already done it a couple times this year, but I just, man, there's something, there's something missing uh, in Dallas right now. I think there's still going to be a, a, probably a 10 win playoff team, but um, Dak Prescott just doesn't look good. I mean, the decisions that he's making, the turnovers have been a huge issue. Uh, their defense has been okay. Um, but man, they just got shellacked last week yeah. uh, against the 49ers and 49ers have been doing that to a lot of people, but I think that can kind of hurt your confidence a little bit. And really this is going to come down to who I think the better quarterback is at this time. And I, th I think that's Justin Herbert. He's playing better football than Dak and I got to take the chargers. Yeah. I think the chargers can protect Justin Herbert. I think they'll get a lead. I don't think they're going to to give it up because I don't think this for Dallas. This is a team where they've got to be defensive led. They they can't expect Dak Prescott to go out there and win them a ball game. And if they're behind, and all of a sudden quarterback has to make some plays, I don't trust them to get it done. So I'm going with Chargers as well, which leaves us the big game. Yes, the Fox, not prime time, but 4:25 kickoff. Uh -huh. Lions. Three point favorites on the road on at the Tampa road. Bay at a three and one Tampa Bay team. John, I'll let you start this one off. All right. So when I look at Tampa Bay and I and I look at what type of schedule have they played so far? They played New Orleans without Derek Carr, uh, the Vikings and the Bears, which we've already talked about. Those are their three wins. So they're not great wins. And I know you can look at the Lions and say, well, you know, they haven't played against great opposing quarterbacks, except for going on the road and getting a win over Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And so this to me is, this is a game, I think it's going to be a slugfest. Um, I don't trust Baker Mayfield um, as, as a quarterback to go out there and, and make plays. I trust the Lions defense a lot more. And the Lions defense, quite honestly, is, is the healthier of the two. And if you're going to go into this game um, and it's going to be a defensive battle, I think, you know, you mentioned the score earlier that was in the 20s. This one could actually be like a, a 17 to 10 
just <laughs> snooze fest. brutal game. Yeah, and, and and I think that's where where it is. If the Lions can you know stop a a you know a inept run game and force Baker Mayfield to throw the ball around, he'll eventually throw it to us. And so I'm going to sit here and and tell you right now, I think the Lions go down there and they get a good win. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. I think it's going to be a tight game. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, probably 24 to 20. Uh, I could see this game shaking out. Um, I just think that their strengths match up with our strengths. You talk about their front seven being pretty damn good. Our offensive line and run game is pretty damn good, too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be strength on strength. I don't think there's many mismatches that go against us uh, this week. And plus, look, we know Florida, pretty big hub for Michiganders this time of year, going down there in the fall and in the wintertime. There's going to be a lot of blue at that stadium. And uh, just talking to the players, uh, really, after all the road trips so far this year, um, it makes a difference. It does. I mean, it gives you a boost of adrenaline, makes you feel like you're not going into as hostile as an environment. Um, I think that's going to give them enough juice to to go down there and be able to pull this one out. I don't care what it looks like as long as you score one more point yep. than the other team and, and find a way to keep on. Well, they have to score more than three and a half more. Yeah, well, that's a three. I mean, it could be a match. But at the end of the day, I'll, I don't I care. Just go win. down and get the win, <laughs> right? Um, I think they're going to be able to do it. I think that uh, they're, just, they're playing good football, man. And this is a team now that we can finally be comfortable uh, knowing that the past is in the past, yep. right? I think especially what they've shown us, not this year, but the last 15 games. 12 and three. I mean, you don't do that by accident. You don't do that by, uh, by getting lucky. You do that by doing a, being a damn good football team. And the two things that they're good at running the ball and stopping the run, those things matter in this, in this league. Especially and I on think the road. Those things especially well. on the road. And like we said, if you can find a way to win the turnover battle, uh, in a game that's probably going to be pretty tight, that's going to be the difference. I, I like the Lions to get it done. Well, count on having a good team. Good teams go on the road and are, are able to get wins. So on Monday, uh, TJ and I will get together. We'll break down what happens for the Lions on Sunday. So thanks for tuning in to Necessary Roughness. 